Well, hello, this is John Barkley with another video quick tip. It's been a while since I've presented one of these. I've learned something important in Lightroom. I've been frustrated on a number of occasions in setting a black and a white point using the way I've been taught and many others teach. So I want to show you something new that I've found which I think is revolutionary, at least for me. Some of you may already know, and I apologize if you already do, but I'm finding not many do. So most people would take an image like this, and again, I'm not going to cover any of the other sliders except for a black and a white, and then I'm gonna show you a tone curve. That's it, we're not gonna talk about white balance and things like that. In a situation where we have a fair amount of data missing, right, before the pile of data starts, there's a fair amount of nothing happening up here on the right side of this histogram. And on the left, we have a similar situation, but not near as bad that we're missing just a little bit of data on this left side, which makes an image look flat. So typically we wanna set a black and a white point. And here to four, what I would do is I would go to the white slider and I would start titrating with, if you don't know this, you can just hover over any one of these sliders. I don't need to do anything special, but hover over it. And then I can tap up with my up arrow until I set a white point. And the way I have typically done that is I go until it blows out or it clips. And then I titrate back one and that arguably sets a white point. And then I do the same thing for the blacks. I titrate down with my down arrow key until I clip, which I've just done. Come back one and then we've arguably set a black and a white point. I don't know about you, but it, this looks terrible. And this was my frustration. And so I would do all sorts of gymnastics and bring the whites back until I felt like they looked right. Uh, bring this back. I might play with my exposure slider. And then ultimately I'd end up going into Photoshop where I had a levels tool. And then it dawned on me, I have that same capability in Lightroom. So let's take a virtual copy here. And let's show you the new method. Now what I would do is I would not use the black and white sliders. Rather, I come into the Tone Curve tab. Now, when you open up the Tone Curve, it's typically going to default to include all of these sliders, lights, darks, uh, highlights, shadows. I don't want that because it doesn't allow me to uh, grab uh, the points of black and white that I want to. To, to change to the alternate view of this, just go to the bottom right of this box and click on that little icon and it's gonna make all those sliders go away. You click on again, all those sliders come back. They both have value and that's for another video. I really just wanna cover this specific thing today. So now, how would I set the white point? I would go up here until I have a double arrow, an up and down arrow. Notice it's a plus sign but it becomes an up and down arrow here. And I'm simply gonna click and drag and pull. And I'm gonna set that way. Just a little thing to understand, you can pull down accidentally very easy. In this case of setting the white point, you wanna keep it all the way to the top. So make sure to pull over and up at the same time. Same thing with the black point. I'm, whoops, see that's what happens when you don't get the double arrow. Got to get the double arrow and then you're pulling just that point. So I'm going to pull this one over while pulling down at the same time. And there we go. So let's take a look and remind you. Here's the, whoops, we got to go back and, and, and uh, use this to set it all the way up to here. Okay, so here was version number one using just these whites and blacks. And here's the better method of using the tone curve to click and drag and click and drag. It's night and day difference. It's really dramatic. So I would encourage you to pay attention to when you, specifically when you have a fair amount of data missing. If you have a histogram that's pretty close to the edges, the old method of just simply titrating up a couple of clicks to set a black and a white or up to set a white point and down to set a black point works just fine. But when you have a fair amount of um, space between the, the edge of the histogram and where the data starts, using the method with the tone curve, I think you'll find is a much better result. I hope this has been helpful. 
Thanks for watching.